All right, we're going to continue. Uh, we've been looking at how to create static methods, and uh, now I'd like to show you how we can create a method to validate input, and also how we can create overloaded methods. And uh, we're going to refactor our Sentinel uh, demo that we did before, where the teacher enters a series of grades and then enters a Sentinel value uh, to tell us that um, she's done entering the grades or he's done entering the grades. So let's take a look at that. So I've loaded the Sentinel program up into NetBeans and uh, we've used it before so you should be familiar with it. Uh, I think I've used it twice now. First to show you how to do Sentinel input and then again uh, to show you uh, how I could use the command line to redirect input from a file. And I probably won't do that here uh, the idea is I want to show you how to refactor a program and also how we can use a method to uh, validate the input. So let's just review the uh, flowchart for this, uh, excuse me, the pseudocode for this and just kind of the logic of the program. So the Sentinel stuff is pretty simple. We have a while loop and it's going to keep inputting values until the user enters the magic sentinel value that tells us that he or she is done with the input then we'll go ahead and calculate the average and display it and all we need to do to keep track of the average is we have to know the total of all the data that's entered in this case these are grades and we have to um, have know how many were entered to compute the average and then we have a variable called current grade, which we use for the input. So if we look at our uh, pseudocode here, it's like prompt the user for the grade, read the value for the current grade, and then check for the sentinel. Now, uh, you should know now that this is pretty dangerous because it's not bulletproofed and it assumes that uh, I'm going to have to uh, get an exact integer. And the user could easily make a little typo and that would break the program and in this case we didn't even address that so imagine how horrible and frustrating it would be if you just entered 30 or 40 grades and then suddenly made a typo and the program failed and you had to start over so we don't want to do that that's one of the reasons we bulletproof our programs is not to frustrate our users again it's all about being a good wizard right so we want to try to create a good experience for our users uh, make their lives better, make it easier for them to complete their work. Okay, so uh, we already know how to fix this, right? We can basically set up a while loop. We use the test has next int, and then if it gets a uh, bad value, we use the uh, read line, which reads whatever trash they wrote uh, at the command line, and, and then we can reflect that back to the user and tell them to try again or we can um, just go ahead and throw it away. And so uh, if you think about what happens, I started writing the pseudocode out for this program, but now to do the bulletproofing, this part is going to really expand. I'm going to have a while loop in here and a bunch of conditional code. And that kind of makes it more difficult to see the overall logic of the program. So really this read the value for the current grade is more like read and validate the value, the value for the current grade. And loop until correct. So I'm hoping that most of you can go ahead and do this and you'd be able to inline this. But I think it would be better if we could simply have a single command that would fix this for us. So basically this current grade here, we just need to create a new static method that's going to read that and do all the checking for us, right? So this is going to be current grade equals uh, get, and uh, really I wouldn't say get valid int, but uh, we'll just use get int here. Okay, so get int. Now, um, there are some issues here about the design. And uh, notice that uh, NetBeans can tell already that I don't have this. Uh, 
And so if I come over here, it has create method get int in Sentinel demo. So that's kind of nice. I'll just go ahead and double click that. And then if I roll down here, there it created the method. Uh, and it's not, it, since it doesn't know what the method will do, it has this throw unsupported operation exception. Now, personally, I kind of object to that because uh, what this will do is uh, it'll cause the program to halt because this, this uh, method is not implemented yet. But we're about to do that anyway. And so usually, right as I create it, I go ahead and delete that. And so now the method will run. It doesn't do anything yet because I have no code in it. Uh, I'm just going to change this to public. It doesn't really matter that it's private. Um, and we'll talk about that later on when we learn about classes. But since the previous ones I've done were public static, I'm going to do that. Okay, uh, I noticed the return type here is an int. That's reasonable because I want to get an int. And um, it might be nice to uh, have it take a parameter here. And so if you think about it, when I do the input, I have to do the prompt. And so if I want, I can keep the prompt here and I can just do the input. I'll tell you what, let's write it that way the first time. So we're not going to have any parameter initially. And then now, here's a, a subtlety. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So that's the end of main. Why doesn't it like that? Missing return statement. Oh, okay. So obviously this is going to have to return. Uh, that's a spurious error message because I haven't written my method yet. Okay. So uh, now let's come back up here. And uh, basically uh, what I had before was I'd have int. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this into the new method. Okay, and I'm not going to call it current grade anymore. All right, so uh, let's uh, set up a couple of variables here. So int and then input value. See, it's important to understand that I'm writing this method in a general way. It's going to be used for any time I want to get an int, not just for when I want to get a grade. So um, that's why I'm writing it general like this. Now it turns out that a grade is an int. And we'll do a bit with this as we go. So, uh, okay, so let's copy our comment here. So int.nextint. Now, notice the problem here. The n is out of scope. So here in this method, it doesn't know what n is. And that's because we defined n right here inside of main. So this is local to main. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move this out to make it a class level variable. Okay? So I'm going to do that and I'll pull that up here and whoops, it went in the wrong place. Sorry. Make control Z that and we'll try again. I, I ended up dropping it in the wrong spot. Okay, that's because this damn mouse there we go. Okay. So now uh, that's in the class. And uh, let's see, non static variable in context cannot be referenced from static content. Okay, so the thing is, we have to make it static. So, because this is a static thing. So, we're going to come back up here, and this will be static. And that should take care of our problem. Yep, there we go. Okay, now um, this might not be the best way to do this. Uh, basically, I'm using a global variable, and so I'm really not going to be able to pull this out of this file. And so, and I'm using the in as the global variable. So it's kind of okay to make the code work better, but we could argue that we could have a better design. Now, the better design would be for me to open in here or pass it as a parameter here. Okay, uh, maybe we'll do that later. All right. Now, this is still not bulletproofed, right? So this can generate an error if the user types something at the command line that's uh, 
you know, some trash text that can't be a number, okay? So uh, we want to go ahead and set up our loop. Now this is the same as the loop we've done previously in our other programs. So boolean done equals false. And then we set up a while loop. While not done. And again, done is false, so not done is true, which means the while loop is true and it will run initially. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and put the end of the while loop in there. I like to try to keep things closed as they go. And then uh, let's see, what is it? Input value. Okay, let me fix the return. So return input value. So what's going to happen now is our method is going to handle the input. It's going to go ahead and loop until the user gives us a good value, and then it's going to return it. Now we just have to finish this part in here, and that is we have to test to see if we have a valid int. So we say in dot has next int. Oops, I always get confused about this. Has next int. There it is. And then of course this needs to be in an if block. So if in dot has next int create the if block, go ahead and fix the uh, indentation, close the int block off. So if in dot has next int, in dot next int, that means read it. So here we go. Let me put some comments in here. If there is an int, read it, and then of course we're done. So then we'll set done to true and not done will be false and the loop will stop. Okay, so done equals true. Alright, and then uh, we need an else clause down here. Else, okay, now let's think this through. If in has an extent is false, that means the user uh, fat fingered, mistyped, or deliberately type bad input. And so, uh, as I mentioned before, when I showed you how to do this, you have to clear the uh, input stream that you're reading, the console, because you can't read behind it, right? So there's this trash sitting there that somebody just wrote, and uh, the I'm sorry, that the user just wrote, and we want to get rid of that. So again, we'll say trash equals in dot next line. And what that does is that reads the complete input, and then of course I have to define trash up here, okay? So, oops, and trash will be a string. Again, the idea here is that I can always read any input as a string that won't generate an error. The only time I ever have problems with, uh, oh, you know what? I made a little mistake here, sorry. Uh, in dot next in has to be assigned. So input value equals in dot next in. Sorry about that. So uh, again, anytime that you're doing input, if you're inputting a number, that's the only way that the user can screw it up. They can give you something that's not a valid number. If you read a string, there's no way it can be wrong. It's not going to generate uh, an issue. Okay? All right. Uh, so what's going on here? Variable input value may not have been initialized. Okay. Uh, that's kind of a spurious error. If you see... Um, Base, oh, okay, so yeah, all right. So the compiler can't tell that this while loop won't exit until the input has been set. The fix for that is to go ahead and set the input value here. Now, we got to be kind of careful just so we don't introduce a bug. So let's make this a value that the user can't possibly enter, okay? So I'm going to make this negative 5, all right? So remember, the user is going to enter a number between 0 and 100 or negative 1 to stop the input. Okay? So I've got my method going now. And now when I come up here, basically read and validate the value for the current grade and loop until correct is all done in this single method. 
So if you think about it, I just wrote all this code, which would have been right here in the code, which would have really stretched my code out and made it a little harder to see my logic. And now I've got this going uh, real nicely. So I've got all that error checking, but the basic logic of the code is very clear. It's very readable. Uh, that's a good thing. Okay. And uh, obviously, I don't need this anymore. I'll get rid of it. Leave some space in there. And uh, I put the, I left the prompt in here. And also, you might have remembered that before. Um, when we did this, we re-prompted the user to enter input again. And uh, that's going to be a problem now, so we'll have to figure out how to do that. So uh, probably what we need is a general method here. Like I don't, I don't want to uh, call this something to do with the grades. I could, but then it's very specific and I'm not going to be able to reuse it. So uh, let's do a system out tab. And then again, I want this to be a print line because it's a prompt. And then um, I'm just going to say, you must enter, enter a number. Try again. OK? And that won't disturb the flow. They'll just be this extra prompt uh, after they do the bad input. So we'll try this and see. And uh, let's see, yeah, because then that will roll full at, uh, back up. Okay. All right. I think I got this good. I'm ready to test it out. So we'll try it here. And hopefully everything will work out. All right. So I'm running the program. Enter the grade or negative one to quit. So I'll enter a couple of good grades. Whoops. Uh, oh, that's a bad thing. So control Z. You see what happened? I had the uh, input. You have to click in the output but, uh, display there. OK, I'm just going to stop this because now I'm all screwed up. So I'll come down here and oh, it looks like I had a couple programs running there. I, so I'm not sure how I did that. OK, let's start again. All right, so you have to click in here to put the focus there. All right, so 34, and then 56, then uh, 78, and then 89. Okay, now I'm going to try bad input, FG. And so then you must enter a number, try again. Uh, that's weird. I'm not sure why that looped. Uh, let's try it here. And then, uh, okay, so it took the 99. So I should have one, two, three, four, five values. Let's see if this works out okay. Uh, I might have a little bug in here. I'm surprised that it wrote that twice. Oh, no, we're good. So you entered five grades one, two, three, four, five. So again, it didn't count this as a grade. So I have one, two, three, four. There's the fifth grade. And uh, that means that the uh, average is fine. OK? Uh, let me just take a quick look and see if I can figure out why it uh, double printed that uh, prompt. Let's see. Oh, I see. Um, So basically, we check to see if we have the next stint, and then we read it. If we don't, it comes down here. It says, oh, you got to enter a number. Try again. And then it reads the trash. And then it comes on back up here. Uh, it looks like it doesn't wait. So it sees that there isn't another in. It falls through one more time, and then it tests. Uh, I got to be honest, I don't really like that, but I'm going to put up with it here. Um, and maybe one of my colleagues can help me with that. I don't see that right off. All right. Uh, it is working now. Let's see. System out prints. Just enter a number. Try again. I don't see that. Uh, 
How do I get the output? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it just seems like it kind of skips. So it's it thinks there's something there that's not an int. Um, I wonder if, let's see. And I'm specifically doing next line, so it should read if uh, the user typed the enter key. It should read the whole line. Uh, what happens if you use next and you have a space? It'll read that as the first string, and then it'll read the rest of the line as another. So next line should read everything. Okay, I've got a little bit of an issue here, so I'm not really sure um, why it's doing that. Uh, you know, this is kind of silly, but I'm going to just move these around and put this one first, just in case that helps. Uh, but I don't think that'll make any difference. I'm just kind of randomly trying something that I don't really follow. So this is probably not going to make any difference. All right, let's run it again. So again, I got to click here, uh, whoops, to make sure I'm in the input. All right, so 56, uh, 67, 78, 89, DF. Must enter a number, try again. Yeah, it doubled it again. Yeah, that's weird. All right. And then negative one. So again, we get the five grades. So it's just double printing that uh, message. But uh, it is working correctly. It's got the right count, and it's, uh, I assume, one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Yeah. Should be calculating the average correctly. I always hate when there's something I don't quite follow, but uh, I guess we're going to let that go. All right, where are we at on our time? So that's 20 minutes. I'm going to stop this, and then I'll continue, and we'll refine this a little bit more.